What's going on? Welcome to the video. Today I'm talking about intermittent fasting for beginners. So I'm going to cover everything you need to know in regards to what exactly is intermittent fasting, who it might be a good fit for, who it's probably not a good fit for. I'm going to talk about my own experience following an intermittent fasting schedule and why I stopped following it uh, a year or so back. Okay, so I'm going to talk about all that and more. Let's get into it. And if you end up liking the video and getting some value from it, go ahead and subscribe to my channel to make sure you get notified when I make more videos just like this every single week. So the first thing I'll cover is the question of what exactly is intermittent fasting. And if you're watching this video, you probably have some sort of idea already about what it is, so I won't spend too much time on that. But basically, what intermittent fasting is, is eating all your calories in the day within a specific time frame. Maybe that's between six hours of the day, or maybe it's eight hours. Some people do you know, uh, a four hour eating window. Um, and the way it's most commonly done is by simply skipping your breakfast meal and pushing off your first meal of the day until about lunchtime. Maybe that's 12 or one o'clock, maybe it's two o'clock. Um, it's all about what is most convenient for you. And that's something that I very much like about intermittent fasting is that there's really no one specific factual way that you need to do it. It's a very flexible uh, strategy with your nutrition that you can tailor to your preferences, your schedule, and what you find works best for you. So for example, someone who uses an eight hour eating window might have their lunch at 12 noon and they might have their dinner at around 8 p.m. and they won't have anything to eat before or after those two meals, and that's perfectly fine. That's a good way to execute intermittent fasting. However, somebody else might be having their first meal at 2 p.m. and their dinner meal at uh, 9 p.m., right? And they won't eat anything after or before uh, those meals, and that works too. They're both um, within the guidelines of intermittent fasting. And you can do intermittent fasting in various ways in regards to how many meals you're eating per day. I know many people who do intermittent fasting and they still eat three or four meals in the day. They just squeeze them in to their eating window. And I know a lot of other people who like intermittent fasting because they can you know, limit themselves to only eating one or two meals in the day and that's more convenient for them and they just eat bigger meals. Neither is right or wrong. They are, it's all, you know, it should be all based on what your preferences are and what's easiest for you to sustain. So now let's talk about what some benefits of doing intermittent fasting could possibly be. The first one, in my opinion, is that it makes eating in a calorie deficit more manageable. And what I mean by that is this. If, let's say, for example, you're eating 2,000 calories per day. If you're eating your first meal at 1 o'clock p.m., and your dinner meal is at 7 or 8 p.m., and those are your two main meals of the day, spreading your 2,000 calories across those two main meals is gonna allow for bigger, more satiating meals, and it may feel like you're actually eating more food than you actually are. It may feel like you're eating 2,500 calories or something like that, whereas for the same person who's eating those same 2,000 calories, if that person starts eating the minute they wake up at 6.30 a.m. or 7 a.m. and they have to spread those same 2,000 calories from 6.30 a.m. all the way over till they get home at night at 9 or 10 p.m., they're gonna have to eat much smaller meals throughout the day. They're gonna have to eat much smaller snacks and they may actually feel a lot hungrier and, and feel like they're actually dieting compared to the person who's intermittent fasting. Benefit number two is that it's a very time efficient eating method. And basically what I mean is that if you're eating two meals in the day, lunch and dinner, you're gonna have way less meal prep than if you're eating five times a day like a lot of people are trying to do. They're trying to eat four, five, six, seven meals a day. And the fact that you don't have to prepare 30 meals for you know the entire week as meal prep, that's gonna save you hours and hours and hours a day, not to mention, the time it takes to simply sit down and eat five meals in a given day, that itself is gonna take an hour or two just to physically do the act of eating those meals. So with intermittent fasting, if you're only having two main meals, not only are you saving time not having to sit down and eat every few hours, but you're saving a lot of time meal prepping. You're probably at most prepping only one meal in the day, that lunch meal, and you're probably gonna have the dinner meal when you go home so you're not prepping it uh, in advance at least. 
Benefit number three that I've observed is that it's very convenient. And a lot of people tell me that they don't eat a, a breakfast a lot of the time when they rush out to work or they eat a very non-nutritious breakfast like a granola bar or cereal or they grab something that isn't that great anyway. So when I tell them about an intermittent fasting strategy like this, it actually very much appeals to them because they weren't doing so well in that morning meal anyway. So it's convenient to fit into their schedule, a protocol that allows them to kind of just rush out the door, get things in order in the morning, take care of the things they need to do, and then focus on eating their main meals a little bit later in the day. Benefit number four that is worth mentioning here is the cognitive and energy benefits associated with fasting in the morning. And I don't want to go too deep into, you know, all the, the scientific talk, you know, behind fasting and what it does to your body and how great it is, because this is a video for beginners. And I, I really just want to talk to you about what intermittent fasting is and see, you know, give you the info to know if it might be a good fit for you and, and to help you reach the goals you want to reach. Um, but there are plenty of studies and research that actually support the idea that um, fasting in the morning has benefits and, and positive outcomes for being more focused and being more productive and actually having more sustained energy and alertness uh, in the morning. And keep in mind that a lot of people when they're doing intermittent fasting will drink plenty of water in the morning and coffee as well to uh, keep their energy up but also to curb their hunger because caffeine works as an appetite suppressant. So. I believe that could also factor into the alertness, the productivity, the energy is if you're having some coffee in the morning too on an empty stomach, that can help with almost like an enhanced effect of being more focused, productive, uh, alert, in addition to the actual act of fasting itself. And in my opinion, those are the four major benefits of doing intermittent fasting. And going off of that, let's go into who I think could be a good candidate to try intermittent fasting and could really benefit from it. And the first person that comes to mind is someone who is in a fat loss phase and wants to lose weight and get leaner. And the reason why I think you are a good candidate for intermittent fasting is because of the first benefit that I mentioned, which is it makes eating in a calorie deficit, eating a little bit, you know, lower amounts of food, more manageable and feel like you're not even dieting. And again, just to be clear, there's nothing super magical or special about pushing off your first meal until lunchtime that's gonna make you lose more weight. The reason I'm saying it's beneficial for someone who has fat loss goals and is in a fat loss phase is because you can eat lower amounts of calories and it feels like you're eating a normal amount of food. It feels like you're eating probably a little bit more than you actually are because you're allowed bigger, more satiating meals if you're only having two meals a day. And if you're having a hard cutoff time of your eating, you know, at that 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. or whatever it is for you, and a hard start time of noon or 1 p.m., you're not eating before or after those times, where a lot of people are, you know, nonchalantly snacking throughout the night or snacking in the morning, eating nuts, peanuts, all, the, all these things that really add up the calories. Someone else I think intermittent fasting could be a really good option for is someone who has a really, really busy schedule. Someone who maybe works a corporate job, you know, seven or 8 a.m. you're starting and you're not done till five or six or 7 p.m. at night or whatever type of job you work, you've got a very busy or hectic schedule. And the reason why intermittent fasting can fit in very well with a demanding job or a busy schedule like that is because you don't have to worry as much about food. You don't have to worry about meal prepping three, four, five times in the day. You don't have to worry about sitting down and eating so many times. You can uh, you know, easily have your lunch meal at whatever time is convenient to you and then that's it. You don't have to worry about eating again until dinner time. A third person who might be a good match with an intermittent fasting schedule is someone who prefers bigger meals, right? So. If you like, if you'd rather eat a, you know, 2,000 calorie meals in the day as opposed to, you know, four or five or six small, you know, 300 calorie meals all throughout the day, this is definitely for you if you prefer those bigger, more satiating meals. And again, the reason for that is because you're likely eating only two meals in the day and you can spread out most of your calories for the day across those two meals. Now let's go into who I think intermittent fasting is probably not a great idea for. Uh, and there are a few people who I believe this for. And the first one and the very obvious one is people who are looking to build muscle and get bigger and gain weight. 
Because if you're like me at the time of making this video and you're in a lean bulking phase where you're eating over 3,000 calories a day and you know my goal is to gain one or two pounds each month of muscle, it's gonna be hard. It's not gonna be in my best interest to limit the amount of hours I can eat in the day and, and you know shrink my meals to only two meals in the day when I've got plenty of food to eat. So if you do have those goals of building muscle and getting bigger and you're eating plenty of food in the day, uh, intermittent fasting it probably isn't a match with what you're trying to do right now. And it's gonna be advantageous to allow to you know your schedule to eat really whenever you need to in the day to get in all your food uh, that's required to build muscle and get and get stronger. Another type of person who I don't think intermittent fasting would be a perfect fit for is someone who prefers to work out in the morning. And hear me out on this because it's not a hard yes or no for this one. You can still work out in the morning and do intermittent fasting if you want to and if you feel good doing it. But to really optimize your workouts and to you know have the most possible energy for your workouts and to uh, get you know the best possible recovery, it's going to be in your best interest to have a proper pre-workout snack or nutrition and a post-workout snack or nutrition, including some carbs and some proteins. Um, if you've ever weight lifted, you know, on an empty stomach, so fasted, compared to with a proper and effective pre-workout nutrition, there's no comparison. You're gonna be able to lift more, you're gonna be able to be better prepared for your workout if you've got some carbs and some protein in, in your system before going to do that lift. And th this is a, a more advanced approach to make sure that you have a proper pre and post workout snack or meal in there. Um, and like I said before, that's why I don't think it's ideal for someone who works out in the morning like myself. Um, but that being said, if you train on uh, an empty stomach and fasted and you feel fine, then who am I to tell you that you shouldn't do that, right? Um, I'm just saying it's probably not absolutely optimal. So now I'm gonna share my own experience doing intermittent fasting and I've actually done it for many years in the past uh, with a lot of success when I used to work in the corporate world um, for many of the reasons we've already talked about. It was very convenient with my schedule. I was waking up pretty early to go into Manhattan and go into work and I didn't wanna have to make my breakfast plus package all my meals up and um, eating all throughout the day like five or six or seven meals was just so inconvenient and uh, I didn't have the time to do that. So it was convenient, it was time efficient, it made my life easier um, and I also preferred bigger meals uh, at that time and I still prefer bigger meals. So that's why I did it and, and that's kind of the, the reasons uh, why I did it for so long. And as I've already mentioned before, it was very advantageous when I was in a fat loss or a cutting phase trying to get leaner, trying to lose as much body fat as possible because it made it feel like I wasn't eating only 2,000 calories or only 1,800 calories. Um, I was able to have two decently sized meals and you know it, it didn't feel like I was really dieting. But going off of that, you know, I, I haven't been intermittent fasting now for almost two years and the reason for that is because I've spent the majority of the last two years uh, building muscle and focusing on getting bigger and stronger and gaining weight. And for many of the reasons I mentioned earlier, I'm eating more food now. I'm eating over 3,000 calories and I've been eating in that range for you know a good chunk of the last year. And it's not easy to eat 3,000 calories or 3,500 calories or even 2,800 calories uh, in only two meals of the day, which is what I generally was doing, um, and a snack or two. So that's really the only reason I've stopped intermittent fasting for a while now is because it just didn't align with my goals and it didn't align with how much food I was needing to eat in a day to reach my goals. But that being said, next time I do a fat loss phase or next time I'm eating say below 2,500 calories, I would absolutely give it a try again and I would absolutely utilize that eating schedule to my advantage. And the last point I'd like to make about intermittent fasting I think is very important and could be really helpful to you, um, which is this. So if, if you're new here and you don't exactly know who I am and what I do, so I'm a personal trainer and an online fitness coach uh, for the last nine years or so and I work mainly with men as my clients. and. I've used an intermittent fasting approach for our nutrition 
for many of the guys, dozens and dozens of the guys I've worked with over the last four or five years. And I will say that for a high percentage of men who work a full-time job, who want to lose weight, who you know want to simplify their nutrition and make it as sustainable as possible, I believe intermittent fasting works for a very high percentage of men who want to do those things. And I would say that between 80 and 90% of guys who I've tried it with, it's ended up to be like an amazing fit with their schedule and their lifestyle and has helped them make it a little bit easier to reach their fat loss goals and successfully keep that weight off over many years, right? So it's very sustainable and makes it a little bit easier to stick to. It's more of a, a lifestyle as opposed to a temporary diet. Um, and that's really impressive. And I mentioned that because I, I wanna compare it quickly to another really popular diet, which is keto. Um, and you hear all the time people losing a lot of weight on keto, losing weight very, very fast. And again, I've coached over 100 people at this point, and I would probably go out and say that the way keto is structured, you basically don't eat carbs ever for the rest of your life anymore, right? You eat like, uh, what, like three or 5% of your diet is coming from carbs. So that's basically like you have a vegetable and that's it, right? That's the extent of your carbs for the day. Um, probably 1% of the population can do keto and actually follow it for the rest of their life. And, you know, there's a lot of people on earth, right? There's 8 billion people on earth. Uh, there's 300 million people in the United States where I live. So if 1% of people can do that and really like it and, and follow it all the time and, and praise about it, that's still, what, 3 million or 30 million people just in the United States, I'm terrible at math, that are like all for it, right? So that, I, I share that just to show you like the success rate you know, you're way more likely to be able to stick to intermittent fasting for an extended period of time if you hit those points I mentioned before. You want to lose body fat. You you um, want to have a more convenient and, and time efficient approach. You don't want to have to meal prep all the time. You don't want to have to sit down and eat many meals in the day. Um, you're going to have a way bigger uh, rate of success, uh, likelihood of success, following an intermittent fasting schedule as compared to keto, whereas I'd go out on a limb and say 99% of people do it, they might lose some weight, but then they gain the weight back and they can't do it for the rest of their life. But that's gonna wrap up this video. Let me know in the comments what you think, if you've tried intermittent fasting or if you're thinking about trying it. And I've got a gift for you if you've made it this far to the end. If you'd like my personal guide to intermittent fasting, the way that I teach it, that makes it super, super easy and simple, send me an email with the uh, subject line, free intermittent fasting guide, and just type me an email and tell me that you'd like it, that you watched this video, and I will send it over to you. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm gonna put this other video up on the screen in just a second that I think you'll really like as well, that could really help you on your fitness journey. And I will see you on the next video.